Hi guys, this is Emily Cupelli for the Alleyway Stamps. For today's card, I will start coloring a piece of cardstock with my Distress Ink in Antique Linen and my Round Blending Tool. I will color the whole panel with this color. Once I'm done coloring it, I will use the small heart in my Brain Freeze stamp set and I will stamp it randomly and repetitively on the whole panel. I do not have any other ink in a similar color, so I'm using the same antique linen distress ink which worked perfectly with the look I'm going for in this card, but you can use any other light ink you prefer. Then I will color the tiny hearts with my distress ink in tattered rose. I'm not doing any shading, just adding the color diluted with some water. I'm going to die cut three of these mini polaroids from quick cuts and dab a bit of tattered rose on the inner part of the dies using my round blending tool. I'm being very light handed with this color. Now I will stamp the cherry, the candy and the lollipop from the same brain freeze stamp set on each of the polaroids using my archival ink in sepia. I will not worry if they do not fit completely on the little square since it adds even more interest to the photos. I will be coloring the images with the sponge sugar and shaded lilac distress inks and some water using a small round brush. As usual, I will add more intensity to the color on the edges to create more dimension. First, I wet the area I want to color with clean water. Then I start adding the color gradually, intensifying it until I'm happy with the result. Adding more color to the edges and leaving the center lighter. I'm cleaning my brush between colors and working in sections with one color at a time. Later, you will see that I added a darker pink to the pink sections since the sponge sugar is too light and too similar to the background. For the cherries, I used sponge sugar and picked raspberry, using the lightest color as a base color and the darker on the edges to add some dimension. I also add a bit of shabby shutters to the leaves. I ended up loving these more vibrant colors. I'm adding a bit of antique linen to the edges of these squares using my round blending tool. This will add more dimension and contrast once I put the rest of the Polaroid together. I will do this to the three images. Now I decided I wanted the colors of the candies more intense, similar to the cherries, so I'm adding a bit of picked raspberry to the edges of the pink areas. I will add more intensity and even more dimension. I love how they turned out because they still look soft and kind of vintage, but more fun and eye-catching. For the bottom part of the card, I already cut two thin strips of paper, which I will glue one over the other, and five wider strips, which I will leave in a single layer of paper. I'm adding just a bit of antique linen to the edges of my pieces of cardstock. I have been using the smooth side of the Tim Holtz watercolor paper, but for all this bottom part of the card, I'm using the more textured side. It kinda look like wood grain to me and adds more texture and interest to the card. Now I will glue all the pieces to the bottom panel using my liquid glue. I will start gluing the thinnest strip, then I will glue the strips on the corners using the grid on my acrylic block 
I will center the strip in the middle. And finally, I will glue the two other strips. This way they are evenly spaced. I will glue this piece to the panel I created before. For this sentiment, I already cut another strip of paper, which I will use with the textured side up. The texture will be no problem in this case, since I'm not stamping anything on it. Actually, I'm using these letter stickers from EK Success to add the word thanks to my card. These are gold glitter stickers, which doesn't rub off and adds a lot of shine to the card. Once I have sticked the letters, I will cut this piece of paper where I also used a double layer of paper, leaving the same amount of space to both sides of the paper. I'm going to add a bit of antique linen to this piece as well. Using the grid and the edge of my acrylic block, I will glue the photos I created to the front of my card. I'm going to cut three pieces of cold washi tape from scotch and add them to the polaroids, giving the illusion that the photos are being held to a wall by some washi tape. To simulate some nails without adding any bulk to the card, I will add tiny dots of liquid pearls in gold to the corners of the paper with the sentiment. This is my card finished. Here you can see all the glitter on the letters and the metallic shimmer in the watchy tape, as well as the cute sweet images in my polaroids. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Alleyway Stamps channel as well as my channel if you are not subscribed yet. Remember to visit both blogs to see the full list of supplies and more close-up pictures. Here is another card using the same brain freeze stamp set and a lot of ways to use it. And one layer card with a lot of shine as well using a different way to watercolor your stamped images. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!